Now we're going to change gears and we're going to talk a little bit about the supply side of things. Uh, prior to this, we've been talking about demand. Demand involves mostly the consumer side of the market, and the supply side is going to concern much more of the producer side. So to make it easier, try to put yourself in the shoes of an entrepreneur or a business owner when we talk about uh, the given situations. Uh, the law of supply states that as a business owner, uh, my supply, uh, the quantity that I supply my good or service will increase if I can get a higher price for that good. So basically, I want to sell more of the goods that I can sell at the store for a higher price, which will yield me a higher profit. This is kind of hard to understand. Uh, we'll bring this in uh, a little bit more with context later uh, when we bring demand in along with supply. Uh, but again, quantity supplied by the producer will increase if they can get a higher price for that good in the market. So while the law of supply states that I'm going to produce more of the things that I can get a higher price for, there are some things, uh, some factors that would allow me to produce more or less of something or cause me to produce more or less of something even if the same price is going to be charged to the consumer in the market or at the store. Uh, the first of which would be the cost of raw materials. If I um, have to pay more for the raw materials that go into uh, my finished product or my manufactured product, uh, if I have to pay more for the input costs, then obviously I'm not going to be able to supply as much of that product. So the price again is not changing for it, um, but my supply would move to the left, it would move inward. Uh, so this is hard because if you look at this the, the first S line here, this black S line, and then you look at a decrease to the to the uh, to the red S line, this this signifies a decrease because you can see equilibrium was here, and if we follow a straight line down to our x axis, which is our quantity axis, it was uh, right about this right about in this region right here, but after the move, it's over here. Uh, I, I point this out because uh, oftentimes students get confused and they'll say, well, supply went up, so I'm going to move it up. Well, that's actually a decrease if you look at uh, where it's headed along this quantity uh, supplied line. Uh, but if my resource costs decrease, then I'm able to produce more. Uh, it doesn't cost me as much to make my, my, my final product, so I can increase my supply from this black S line to the green S line out here. Again, price isn't changing, but I'm able to supply more or produce more of that product uh, because my resource costs are cheaper. Uh, so the next reason I might choose to supply more or less of a good, uh, even if there isn't a price change for that particular good, is known as the alternative output price change. Um, so think of it like this. Think of it like you're a farmer and you can grow either broccoli or corn. As a farmer, as a producer of these two crops, I'm going to produce the, the crop that's going to yield the highest profit for me. So in this situation, uh, if broccoli uh, increases its price, if broccoli itself is moving from P1 to P2, uh, naturally I would sell more broccoli. But we're saying here that the price of broccoli to the consumer in the market is changing. Uh, so what we have to do is apply uh, the shifter to a different product that I also produce, uh, which in this case would be corn. So if the price of broccoli increases, I'm going to produce more broccoli. That's the law of supply, QS1, QS2. But at the same time, that means I'm going to supply less corn, even if the price of corn remains constant in the market. It's the same price for the consumer when they go to the market uh, to, to get their corn. So that's the same thing. Uh, now on the opposite side of things, if broccoli uh, moves from P1 to P2, in, in other words, broccoli is decreasing in price, I'm going to increase the amount of corn that I'm producing as a farmer, even though the price for corn has remained the same. And that's what we have to keep in mind, is that when we talk about shifters, we're not changing the price. We're changing how much we are producing based on something else other than the price of what people pay in the market. And in this case, since broccoli's price went down, uh, I'm going to produce more corn, even though the price of corn has remained uh, constant. Uh, the next shifter or factor that might enable me to produce more 
of a good, uh, even if the price doesn't change in the market, is a technological innovation or an improvement. Uh, for instance, we'll stay on the farmer's uh, example. Uh, if I am a cattle farmer and uh, I, I find a new technological innovation that allows me to um, uh, produce more milk or get more milk out of my cows, uh, that, that is a benefit to me. I can supply more of that. It's the price of milk isn't going anywhere, remember, but we're going to be able to move this black S out to the green S. Um, so if you made, and another example would be if you made improvements to an assembly line for products that you are, that you are putting together. Uh, that would allow you to make uh, or produce more of that good. So you're going to move outward to the right, increasing your supply, even though the price for that product paid by the consumer does not change. Now, another reason you might see more of a supply in the market um, of a particular good, even if this price of $50 doesn't change, is just directly related to the number of suppliers. For instance, uh, if we took football games as our example, uh, and back in 2001, uh, the, XS, the XFL was formed. Uh, that added eight new teams into the market uh, as far as what football games you could possibly watch. Uh, so the number of suppliers has a direct impact on the supply. Again, this isn't changing, but there's a higher supply of that good or that service because they're just more suppliers. Uh, an example, a more simple example, local example would be, uh, for instance, shovels. If a, uh, a new Home Depot or a Lowe's was built in the, uh, in the area, then there would be a higher supply of shovels because that's what they supply. Uh, so very direct um, impact on the amount supplied. Again, price is not changing, but you're supplying more due to the fact that there are just more producers. Now this uh, next shifter is uh, the same shifter that we had in demand it deals with expectations about the future price of a product. Um, so in the demand side, we did not only price, but we did also the future uh, availability of things, and we did the future income uh, uh, outlooks as well. But here for producing, the producer side, the supplier side, it's all about price. So here's, here's how it works. If you're an oil producer and you expect that the future oil prices will decline, then right now, at this instant, you are going to increase your production. You're going to move from S1 to S2. And the reason for that is because you know right now you're going to get a higher price when you sell that product. And that's what the law of supply states, is that you want to supply more of it when you can get a higher price. So if you know that it's going to, it's going to decline in the future, then right now you want to increase the amount that you are producing. And the flip side, if you expect the future oil price to increase, uh, then right now you're going to decrease from S1 to S2 or this red S2 over here um, because you you understand that later on you can sell it for a higher price and uh, that's what's going to be most beneficial to your company. Now another reason you might be able to supply more of something even if the price remains the same for the for the consumer is if you get money from the government. These are known as subsidies. If the government wants you to do something, for instance, uh, when it comes to renewable energy sources, they're oftentimes fairly expensive to, to utilize as part of your company, uh, but if the government wants to make sure that people are making that change from fossil fuels to renewable energies, they may subsidize your company in doing that. So if you get subsidies, sorry about that, the microphone stopped working again, but basically if you get money, subsidies from the government, you can increase your supply. If the government decides to take away those subsidies from you, then you're gonna have to decrease your supply. Keep in mind the price for the consumer never changes here. Another impact the government can have on the, on the amount of uh, goods and services supplied is just through taxes. If the businesses, if businesses, the supplier has their taxes decreased, they have more money to increase their supply. The price of the consumer stays the same, but they can increase from S1 to S2. Um, and then if businesses have their taxes increased, they have less money to utilize. Therefore, they would move from S1 to S3 over here. Again, the price stays the same for the consumer. Lastly, weather can also have an impact on the supply of your goods and services. If you have uh, terrible weather, um, that can decrease the production of your good or service, especially if you are a farmer. Uh, you move from the S1 here over to the red S, uh, which is not labeled. But if you have a good and growing season as a farmer, then you can increase your supply. Uh, again, what you need to remember is that this price, if we had our price access listed here, the price is not moving anywhere for the consumer. So weather can also have an impact on the supply. 
All right. Uh, now we've we've talked about supply and demand uh, separately. Uh, real quickly here, I want to go through what happens when you bring the supply curve in along with the demand curve. Um, we call this point where they come together the equilibrium. It's where producers are able and willing to sell a product at a given price and quantity and where consumers are able and willing to buy that particular product or service at that given quantity and price. And so we'll talk a lot more about this in class, but my, my purpose here is to show you what happens when you have a single shift of either the demand curve or the supply curve and what happens in those situations with price and quantity. So if you start with this single D here and this single S right here and we have a situation where we have an increase in demand, then both quantity and price are going to increase because we are moving from this equilibrium point where they first came together to this new equilibrium point up here. Supply, again, has, has remained constant. It's the same. It's not going anywhere. And demand has increased. So we're essentially moving from this focal point, this equilibrium, to this one right here. And in that situation, with the demand increase, we'll see a supply or a quantity increase and a price incre increase. Uh, the exact opposite can be said with a demand decrease. If you're starting here, at this equilibrium point and the demand curve slides down or decreases your new equilibrium is right here so really what has happened is price has decreased and quantity has decreased because you move from here to here now when supply shifts and demand remains constant uh, we have a little bit different scenario uh, again demand staying right here here's our first equilibrium point where people are able and willing to buy and where producers are able and willing to sell if we increase our supply to the right, remember now it's kind of funky, don't say up or down because if you say up and you go this way, you're actually decreasing your supply. So think of outwards or to the right or increasing. Supply increases from this S to this S. Your equilibrium point started here. It is now down here. So your price has decreased and your quantity has increased. And that's what happens when we have a supply increase. And the exact opposite can be said when supply decreases. As we move from this S here to this S right here, keeping the demand curve constant and not moving, your first, your equilibrium point starts here and it ends up here. Right? So what has happened here is you have decreased from quantity 1 to quantity 2, but the price has increased from price 1 to price 2. And so it's very important to keep these things in mind as we move into our next uh, round of situations that will take place in class.